On part one of this video, I'm gonna take you inside the mind of an autistic person, me, and do my best to try and help you experience what autism feels like. Let's go. Welcome my friend, so good to see you and thank you for stopping by to watch this video. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance and appreciation of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and the best part, you'll join the most amazing YouTube community. Alrighty then. On part one of this video, what autism feels like, we are going to explore the more personal feelings experienced by an autistic person and the daily challenges faced by living on a neurotypical planet. First up, let's talk about feeling different. Autism feels like you're an outcast. Autism feels like you're different. You're out of place. You don't even feel like you're the same as the rest of your family. It doesn't mean you don't love your family. It just means something's missing. You feel different to your friends. You feel different to your work colleagues. Autism can feel like you're an outcast. Bought an outcast, die an outcast. Like an alien dumped on a foreign planet, good luck to you. And this might seem like a strange analogy, but stick with me. All right, this is kind of like a Man of Steel reference. Let's say you go to a different planet, right? Your body, your lungs, they aren't able to breathe the oxygen or the atmosphere in the way they're able to breathe on Earth, right? Because They've evolved to be able to live on Earth. Let's use that analogy. So you've gone to a different planet and your body is able to breathe the way it should breathe to stay alive, to sustain life. Okay, an autistic person born on planet Earth has a brain instead of the lungs, a brain that from the very start is struggling to connect, to sustain communication and therefore life on this seemingly foreign planet. It's like our lungs were made to breathe on a different planet, not here. Our autistic brain Seems like it's not wired to connect with earthly beings properly. The next insight I wanna share is around acceptance. Bottom line, autism can feel like no one accepts you. Autism can feel like no one believes you. Another way of putting it is there's this lifelong feeling as an autistic person that there is this just general given that you have a lack of acceptance from others. So this lack of acceptance that we as autistic people experience is a lifelong feeling. In fact, it's almost become an accepted part of life, accepting not being accepted. Probably the most profound or significant detriments can be on your mental health. If you have a given, a feeling through life that you are simply not accepted for who you are because you're different, then that probably means that you're constantly fighting for people to not only accept you or acknowledge you, but to even buy in to you or to believe anything you say or do. The lack of acceptance in a way manifests into these horribly catastrophizing feelings, which are real, where you think people don't accept me, people don't believe me, therefore people don't believe my personal story, my diagnosis, my circumstances, me as a person. I'm not only not accepted, but therefore that means I must not be believed for who I am. I'm just a sham. This also flows through to intentions. My perception is people always think my intentions are bad or wrong because of the disconnect, but also because of the lack of acceptance. So there's really no win from a mental health point of view here being an autistic person. On to masking, yes, that old chestnut. Autism can feel like you're an actor playing a role on a movie set, except there's no director and no one ever yells, cut. Autism feels like you are born and compelled to mask, to camouflage, to suppress your true autistic self. It isn't an option. As a result, autism feels like there is no real you. Who are you? All you can really say, if you wanna say, who am I as an autistic person, the best answer you can probably give yourself is, well, I don't know who I am. What I do know is I spend my entire lifetime trying to be someone that people will like and accept. I never achieve that, but being me isn't an option. Bottom line is masking is debilitating. It's exhausting. It's profoundly detrimental to the mental health of an autistic person, let alone the mental health of an autistic child. This isn't a good end for an autistic person masking for their entire life. Let's talk about skills and really everyday skills for that matter. Autism feels like you lack the basic understanding, let alone the ability to carry out basic 
human neurotypical skills. And by basic human neurotypical skills, I mean these day-to-day -day skills that people seemingly take for granted. What do you mean you can't do that? Like everyone can do that. Working out which shoe goes on which foot for my son. Basic human skill, right? And not something I've mastered. The clear issue with this particular feeling is compounded, conflated by the fact that you may have special interest, an intense interest, a passion, that you are in fact very gifted at or simply highly skilled at. Skilled at a level that is not the norm. So there's this bizarre disconnect, this gap in skill sets where things that come naturally to neurotypical non-autistic people is something that I can struggle with. But then to make it even worse, I'm really skilled at certain things, passions, special interests. How can you be really skilled at this, but not be able to do that? It's hard to understand. Let's explore the feelings around social interactions, because <laughs> this should be fun. Autism feels like no matter how hard I try in social situations, in social interactions, it's always, every time, difficult, awkward, uncomfortable, and extremely confusing. Face to face, like in the same room interactions with one or a handful of people can always, and I mean this in general terms, can always feel forced for an autistic person. Sure, there may be exceptions to the rule, maybe some safe people, but as a rule, they always seem forced. And more to that, it always feels like no matter what you do or say, it's not taken the way it's intended. Everything is always misinterpreted. It never goes right. You always leave a social interaction thinking bad things about how you came across or what they think of you or just a vicious cycle. Autism feels like social interactions never go the way you want them to. And that's after doing them over in your head like a thousand times leading up to what, the last 10 years prior? <laughs> I reckon fitting in is a pretty big topic amongst the autistic community. Well, in addition to never feeling like you're accepted, autism can feel like you are utterly lost, like you simply do not belong. Autism can feel like you were never born nor destined to fit in. I rarely feel like I fit in. Fit in meaning feel like I'm part of it. I belong, I'm comfortable, this is my place, these are my people. As a result, it's pretty natural for autistic people to feel out of place. So autism feels like you're lost, you don't belong. Autism feels like you are in a constant state of feeling displaced. The critical issue with this particular feeling on fitting in is as a result of not feeling like you belong, like you fit in, autistic people feel like the only way we could ever get a job or maintain a job or find friends or relationships is to basically mask. So to try and fit in by suppressing our true autistic selves. Of course, ultimately this never works because no one can suppress their true selves for their entire lifetime. On to small talk. Autism can feel like neurotypical standard human small talk is a foreign language you can never ever learn. Autism feels like any form of small talk. It doesn't make any sense to you. It doesn't come naturally. It doesn't seem necessary or relevant. There's no real purpose to it. As a result, that can compound into creating creating awkward silences, which obviously lead to uncomfortable interactions and social situations. Bottom line is no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you practice, autism feels like small talk is a language that you will never ever be able to understand, let alone master. And what is the point of small talk anyway? Don't you people like meaningful conversations? Let's talk about wavelength. That connection, that wavelength you can be on with other people is really important in basic relationships on planet Earth. Autism feels like I'm constantly on a different wavelength. We're not even talking near the same wavelength. Like non-autistic people are on the AM band and I'm on the FM band. Probably because, you know, I sound more real and crystal clear and <laughs> stereo. None of those things apply. As an autistic person, I think and communicate very differently on a very different wavelength. I think and communicate openly honestly, logically, straightforward, right and wrong, black and white. The logical part of an autistic brain, in essence, and for the most part, more developed or stronger than the emotional part of an autistic brain. So it's inevitable that we are gonna be on a different wavelength. The clear issue here is the way I've just discussed, I communicate, the wavelength I'm on with regards to communication, that open, honest, straightforward, right and wrong, that isn't, as a rule, the standard practice 
the standard wavelength for neurotypical people. And this disconnect, this inability to come anywhere close to each other's wavelength, as in non-autistic autistic, can really have a big impact on the mental health of an autistic person. It makes you feel agitated and angry and frustrated. Like, what is wrong with these people? Why is everything so hard, so different? Why do they say they like honesty, but then they don't want it? I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Why can't neurotypical people just say what they mean? Do I have to fish for the actual point in your pretty little words? Can't you just tell me the point? I don't want to look for the meaning. I don't want to read between the lines. Let's just have an open, honest conversation. What do you want to say? What do you want? Let's hear it. But that's not the case. We've talked about acceptance feeling like an outcast, feeling like someone who doesn't fit in. But I really want to talk about isolation. This is not the same. Sure, it may be a manifestation of all those together, but it's a really critical feeling of an autistic person. Autism can feel like you're completely isolated from the rest of the world, but you're still living amongst everyone in plain sight. So it's not a great form of isolation. It's a public isolation. It's a premeditated isolation. It's a conscious isolation. Communication differences as an autistic person, they can lead to loss of friends. You can have friends that drop away because at one point or another, you are just too autistic for them. Communication differences can lead to loss of relationships, loss of jobs, the list really goes on. This sense of loss, this constant sense of loss perpetuates into a feeling of isolation. Every autistic person is different, just like every other person on the planet. We all have our individual strengths and challenges. So this video has been about drawing on my lived experiences to give you some sort of insight into what autism feels like. Stand by for part number two, do not miss it. In the meantime, I really do appreciate you watching. If it's resonated, please share this video with your family and friends. Thank you so much for your support. Until my next video, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.